One other thing that we'll examine on a curve, if we have a position function r, so r of t, you can think of it as a vector that's changing with time that takes you from the origin to your position along the curve. If you have this vector r of t, and you look at its derivative, you get this vector r prime of t, or we could call that v of t because it's the velocity, right, that's tangent to the curve. And then we could look at how the velocity changes as you go along the curve. So r is going to be changing, right, and so will the velocity along that curve, and we want to consider changes in velocity. Since velocity has direction and magnitude, um, there can be changes in both the direction and changes in the magnitude. So the acceleration then, which is the change in velocity, turns out will consist of two parts. Part that is tangential to the curve, so we'll call that part a sub t, and a part that is normal to the curve. So this is, this is the direction of the unit tangent, right? And this measures how strongly our acceleration is changing in the direction of the unit tangent. And this is the unit normal. This is the direction that we're turning in, right? Perpendicular to the curve. And this is how strongly we are, we are turning. So we'll see that the acceleration can be broken up into um, two components, a tangential component and a normal component. And it turns out that, that um, the tangential component will be related. This is speeding up or slowing down on the curve, right? The kind of acceleration that speeds you up and slowing down, slows you down. And this is the kind of acceleration that changes the direction of the velocity. So this is turning acceleration. And we'll see that there's a relationship between at and um, the, the rate at which the, um, the um, arc length parameter s is changing. Well, let's see, no, it'll be, yeah, so, yeah, it'll be the second derivative of arc length, right? S is how far you've gone along the curve, so ds dt would be how fast you're going along the curve, and d squared s dt would be how much, d squared s dt squared would be how much you're speeding up or slowing down along the curve. We'll also find that a sub n has a relationship to the curvature as well as um, ds dt. So, We'll find that a sub n is actually equal to the curvature kappa times ds dt squared. So in other words, if you go faster, you're going to need more normal acceleration to, uh, to, keep on, to turn on the curve. Or um, if, if the curve is more curvy, you're going to need more normal acceleration. So we'll de derive these relations as we go along.